In the book of Matthew, in the 23rd chapter, Jesus, while contending with the false teachers of his day, spoke these words to them. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Jesus was dealing with a generation of teachers who were heretical, hard-hearted, and refused to adhere to the truth of Jesus Christ. Here in our generation, we certainly still have vipers and serpents, but I would argue it's exponentially worse than anyone could have imagined. A generation of new false teachers who have taken the term deception to a whole new level, an unforeseen level involving corruption, narcissism, and self-love, self-promotion. These teachers have set themselves up as rock stars, and they are absolutely adored by the blind sheep who follow them. Standing in coliseums in front of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, having worldwide followings in the millions, they butcher scripture and usually make their sermons all about them, them, them. Hipster doofus, so-called pastors wearing skinny jeans and tight t-shirts, will stand before the masses and give motivational speeches while they mention Jesus once in a while and read a verse or two, taking everything out of context, never bringing to the forefront the real problem in your life, in my life, that which is indeed sin. So today we're going to be looking at rock star preacher Stephen Furtek, who does not preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And I've seen plenty of videos uh, on him, exposing him and his heretical teachings. I've never been compelled to do a video myself until today. Uh, the video that I'm going to show you, the clips that we're going to watch, just about made me fall out of my chair because I simply cannot believe that the people who follow him allow him to teach this heresy. Now the video is entitled, Be Careful What You Copy. This was posted last August. About a half a million views. You can also see that uh, Elevation Church, in which Stephen Furtick pastors, is well over 2 million in subscribers. So this guy gets, you know, he has a vast reach to many, many people worldwide. We're going to play the clips and we're going to comment as we go and get ready. Y'all, I put a picture of me on a, we might take this out before we put it on YouTube. Y'all check with me. I put a picture of me one time with the kids. We went to see God's team, Clemson Tiger, Sartop. He's got a Gamecock shirt on. And I had on a Guns N' Roses shirt. Now, all the comments that on the picture said, uh, why are you wearing a Guns N' Roses shirt? That's worldly. Not as good you're spending time with your kids. Now, you just heard Stephen tell the story of him being out with his kids. He posted a picture on social media, and he was wearing a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. Somebody had commented, hey, why are you wearing that t-shirt? It's worldly. And, of course, he did the, or he attempted to spin it and say, hey, you should have commented on the fact that I'm spending time with my kids. See, that's a tactic that they use. Uh, I'm with the viewer that called him out. Why is a leader of a Christian church wearing a Guns N' Roses t-shirt? The most troubling part of this situation, clearly, is the fact that you have to explain this to Stephen Furtick and his followers. Wearing Guns N' Roses t-shirts is not just worldly, all right? It's satanic. Guns N' Roses are the high priests of Satan. They're the disciples of Satan. You're wearing a t-shirt, which by the way are souvenirs of endearment, but you're wearing a t-shirt which promotes the enemy. And, and he seems dumbfounded. He Again, he tries to spin it and, and, and make it sad. Why didn't you, you know, compliment me that I'm spending time with my kids? No, no, no. That's not the issue at all. But see, that's a tactic that they use. This clown is wearing a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. It's shocking. 
That's why he called you out on the t-shirt. That's the first thing that you see in the picture is your Guns N' Roses t-shirt. It's shocking that any man, any woman claiming to love Jesus Christ is wearing actual t-shirts that promote satanic music. There, there is not a scenario you could put any follower of Jesus in where they would wear that clothing. That's what we're trying to get away from. Now, in this next clip, we're going to hear Stephen talk about his son, Elijah, and spending time with him. Here we go. The thing God for is I've had the opportunity to work out with Elijah the last uh, couple of years. And I'm glad that it's going to be at least two more years before he can catch me on bench press. <laughs> but I kind of turned the workout room that's in our house into a little bit of a seminary study, like a, a laboratory, where I'm not only showing him how to do certain exercises, but I don't know if I told you this way, I've been taking him through the top 100 rock albums of all time. Right. <laughs> Train up a child in the way that they should go. And the way that they should go is Led, Led Zeppelin. Okay, this man is not a Christian. He's not a Christian. He is nowhere near Jesus Christ. As he stands on stage in all his pomp and arrogance, just oozing with vanity, it's all about him. Is this church? Are we at church here? We're not at church. This is the Stephen Furtek show. This is about how cool I am with my skinny jeans. And I'm going to raise my son, teaching him about the disciples of Satan. Because that's what rock and roll is. I, I simply can't believe it. I mean, I can. I just didn't think it was going to be this bad where it was actually happening in alleged church. Now, just so we can document this, we're over at Rolling Stone's Top 100 Albums of All Time. And we're going to roll through some of these, so please uh, be patient with me. But here you've got the Beatles, you've got the Beach Boys, um, more Beatles, you've got uh, Bob Dylan. These are Satanists. These are absolute Satanists. John Lennon despised Jesus Christ. Paul McCartney is a proud, professed atheist. Bob Dylan, of course, even on 60 Minutes, uh, fairly com com confessed to selling his soul. Uh, you've got The Clash, Absolute Rebellion. More Bob Dylan. You've got Elvis Presley, uh, Velvet Underground. You've got Jimi Hendrix, which you'll see this guy just absolutely loves. Oh, and, and why not throw in a, a little pure Satanism, Satanism in the way of Kurt Cobain and Nirvana? Why not, right? That, there's no harm there, is there? And if you bear with me again, continue, you've got Fleetwood Mac, Witches, and Warlocks. Uh, and here's one of his favorites, Led Zeppelin. Again, in case you didn't get what I said before, these are the disciples of Satan. These are who Satan used to absolutely capture the minds and the souls of, figuratively speaking, and not, of millions, billions here we've got the Eagles, Hotel California, more Beatles. You've got Pink Floyd. Why not the Sex Pistols? Yeah, let's teach our kids about that. Never mind what the Bible truly says in uh, the book of Proverbs about uh, training up a child in the way that he shall go and, and he will never depart from that. I'll get that scripture in just a minute. Uh, he wants to show them Led Zeppelin. You've got Bob Marley. These are all the rebels. The Allman Brothers. More Jimi Hendrix. And again, bear with me here. You need to see this. Here's Guns N' Roses. Absolutely amazing. I want you to see this because this is what he's bragging about. Here's Purple Rain by Prince, who is one of the greatest bringers of debauchery into the picture. Here is uh, ACDC, Hell's Bells. Sure, why not? Here's John Lennon, Imagine. Imagine there's no heaven, right? Which in essence is a shot at God. We don't want God. That's what John Lennon is saying. More Bruce Springsteen, more Pink Floyd. I want you to see all this. More Prince, The Who, just unbelievable. Now, the verse that he butchered was from Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. 
I don't see anything about Led Zeppelin in there. What he did was absolutely heretical. It was blasphemy. How dare you butcher the scripture for your own personal narcissism? And we don't teach our kids actual Satanism. My goodness, the fact that that needs to be said in this day and age is just shocking. Now again, for the haters who think that this is no big deal, here we are at the Christian Post. One of the latest headlines, Pastor Stephen Furtick criticized for praising Teen Son's song about sex, guns, and money. What? Yeah, he's, he's staying true to his word. This is about the only thing he's true on. Uh, his son has just put out a new album. And you can certainly come out and uh, read this article. Let's read a snippet. In the music video for one of the songs, now again, this is Elijah Furtick, his son, who just released a music album. The song No Hook, Elijah Furtick references oral sex, drinking Hennessy, and his bro keeping a gun. Wow. Surely a, a Christian pastor is not going to promote this or even be happy that this is happening, right? Wrong. Here's what uh, Stephen, his father, said to his son. Dear Elijah, you already know how proud I am of you, but today on the release of your album, Teen Machine, I want you to know that you inspire me. Well, I'm not going to play any snippets from the Sun song. It's not even music. It's some of this rap stuff. This, it's, it's ridiculous. And, and certainly so is the content. Now, I want to come back to this because I do want to play the rest of this clip. Uh, it's just shocking. And, and again, remember, this is supposed to be church. <laughs> Right? We listen to Graves into Gardens to an old church basement, but then sometimes, sometimes we listen to other albums. Um, something funny happened the other day where we were listening to Jimi Hendrix, Little Wing, one of the greatest guitar intros of all time. I learned it when I was 14. And LJ Elijah says to me, this guy sounds like Pearl Jam. <laughs> he, <laughs> he thought Jimi, 1969, was copying Stone Gossard and Mike McCready, 1991, because he didn't know who was copying who. And I... Now, one thing is for sure, he's much more knowledgeable in guitar riffs and rock and roll than he is in the Bible. This is a fact. I said, no, boy. <laughs> you don't have to grow up and, and be a Christian, but you will know that Jimi Hendrix... <laughs> there are... See, he's telling you, he really doesn't care if his child grows up in Christianity or to be a Christian. Uh, his emphasis here is clearly on knowing rock and roll. Again, this is opposite day. Pretending to be a Christian, he's really issuing license for you to go listen to rock and roll. And, and his education, as far as his child goes, is much more important in rock and roll. He tells it like he believes it. You don't have to grow up and be a Christian, but you will know your guitar players and your rock and rollers. It's, it's absolutely shocking. There are some things that are non-negotiable. They're copying Jimmy. Jimmy's not copying them. And uh, give me that, what I handed you before we walked up. I disciple him in so many different ways. I'm pretty proud of myself. I show yeah, him. He is. It's just amazing. And, and again, I'm, I'm commenting. He disciples his son in this nonsense as he pulls up a Pearl Jam cassette. Um, I... And that, that's really all I, I wanted to show you. Uh, this man in no way, shape, or form is a Christian. And where's the trouble? Here's the trouble. This is what he's teaching you. All right? This is what he's teaching you. If blasphemy were a drug, uh, Stephen just sold you the most purest, uncut form of, you know, spiritual cocaine that you could ever hope for if you're one who's truly not looking for Jesus Christ. And sadly, it's all too successful. This is the epitome of of the false teacher in the end times. Now as I close this video, I want to take you to one of the most powerful and prophetic verses in the New Testament when it comes to the subject at hand in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. If you want to know what's really going on here, well it was prophesied. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And this is what Stephen is. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, 
whose end shall be according to their works. Stephen Furtick is as false as one can get. And if you're following this guy, flee. Run away, head for the exits, because he is a heretic. He is indeed a viper and a serpent.